Hi everybody, welcome to Woodfired Weekly at Manor from Devon Cooking School. This week we're going to be making Stollen. We're going to be getting this ready for Christmas and this is a, a bread which will certainly keep for four or five weeks so you can make it well in advance. Because it's such a rich bread we're going to start off by making a flying sponge and a flying sponge is just a mix of yeast with a little bit of flour and a little bit of sugar and some of the liquid from the recipe which is going to give the yeast a really good head start and this is always a good idea if you're going to be adding lots of fat to a recipe because once that fat goes in there it tends to slow things down a little bit. To make my flying sponge in the bowl here I've got a little bit of flour, all the yeast from the recipe, a little bit of sugar in this case, shuffle those together and add some warm milk and I've scalded this milk so I've brought it up to boiling point and then let it cool down a little bit and that just takes out some of the proteins which would otherwise inhibit the bread from being as light as it possibly could be. So I pour that into there and just mix it all up with a little whisk or a spoon. Set that to one side, it'll rise up and then after half an hour or so it'll drop again and that's the point where it's ready to use. Luckily for us I made one a little earlier and as you can see it's really really bubbly, really nice and active so that's now ready to use. Stage two is to add flour, butter, sugar and salt. So I've got some brown sugar there, strong bread flour of course and salt and the butter's at room temperature so nice and soft I can just break that up into the mixture. I'm going to mix all of that in a little bit and the last thing to go in here is one large egg so that's everything in there to make the initial dough. When I start mixing this together it's initially it's going to appear quite dry and then I'll start working it and then the butter will melt and then it's going to get pretty sticky. So don't be tempted when you start mixing this to think oh it's too dry I'll add some more liquid and start throwing in some more milk or another egg and when it starts to get sticky don't be tempted to think oh it's getting sticky I better add more flour. So I've just mixed that up and then I'm going to bring it out onto the table. You can also do this in a Kenwood or a stand mixer of some sort of course. And you can see at the moment it looks rather dry, rather like a, a pasta dough almost. As you can see now I've started to warm the butter up. It's getting rather sticky and sticking to the table. However, don't let that worry you because the fat in here will combine with the flour after a little while. So I'm going to knead this now for a few minutes until it's smooth. So after a few minutes of kneading the dough has really lost all of its stickiness. The lumps have gone, the egg and everything is thoroughly mixed through the dough. It's not perfectly smooth like you might find with an unenriched dough. So it's got these little breaks in it where the butter just allows the dough to break that little bit. But it is nice and smooth, it's got a little bit of a spring to it, so it's ready to set aside and leave to ferment. I'm going to pop this in a bowl and find a warm spot for the dough, this one does need a pretty warm spot, and it will take a little while to ferment. This takes at least a couple of hours to double in size, and that's because of the enrichment, because of the butter and the egg in there, slowing everything down a little bit. I'm going to put it on top of my wood-fired oven behind me, because that's just got a little bit of warmth coming through the insulation, but a sunny windowsill or the airing cupboard would be perfect. Our Stollen dough has now had a couple of hours to ferment. If we have a look at this we can see it's nicely risen, it's definitely doubled in size, nice and soft. I'm going to tip that out, stretch it out, now we're going to add some fillings. So in here I've got raisin sultanas mix peel, a little tablespoon of rum, soak into it and some spices and I've got a mix of cinnamon and ground cardamom. I've also got some flaked almonds so I'm going to stretch this out a little bit, put the fruit on top and as you can see there's quite a lot of fruit and that fruit is something that's going to really help keep it nice and moist and stop it from staling which is one of the reasons why it will keep for so long, that and the butter. So now I'm just going to knead this again so that we distribute all of that fruit through the dough. And I didn't put this in at the start of the fermentation because some spices, cinnamon in particular, is an inhibitor of yeast. 
So if you want the dough to ferment, keep that out. So now I just knead this, and I wouldn't ever do this in the machine because the machine can be a bit harsh and just squish that fruit so it just kind of smears it through the dough and then it all looks a bit messy and you don't see nice intact fruit in the dough. And it's just a minute or two of gentle kneading. And there you can see that the fruit and the nuts and the spices are all nicely distributed throughout the dough. I'm gonna put this back in the bowl and just put it somewhere cool for 15 or 20 minutes to let the butter firm up again before I give it its final shaping. Our stall has been sat in a cool place just to firm up. It's also risen a little bit, I can see, so it's still active, albeit fairly slow. This is going to be enough for two stollen, and tradition has it that you always make two stollen, one for you, one for someone else. So split that into two, and then we're going to do a little bit of shaping on this. So we're going to flatten this down to kind of a rectangle. And then I've got some pre-cut pieces of marzipan here to fit inside. We want it to be just a little bit longer than than that. Of course, if you don't if you don't like marzipan, and I know quite a lot of people go Bleh! at the at the very thought of marzipan, you can leave it out. Uh, but it is it is traditional. So I'm going to pop that in there. I want it just long enough so I can sort of wrap the ends of the dough around the marzipan. Just stretch that and kind of wrap it around the edges so that the marzipan is not exposed and doesn't come melting out of the end of the dough. Then I wrap the dough over the top of the marzipan. Press it down and I make sure there's a little bit there left over. That's the, the traditional shape. Pop that on there. Repeat with the second piece. So we've got our two little stall in there. We're going to give them an egg wash. Now we need to cover them and leave them to rise and go a little bit soft. So 30, 45 minutes, depending on the temperature. We don't want them to dry out, so cover them over either with a piece of oiled cling film or a plastic box like this. Put them somewhere warm and then we'll be ready to bake. The Stollens have had their final rise. You can see they're visibly risen. It's not going to get big and soft because effectively we've got a small amount of dough wrapped around a large amount of fruit. So not light and fluffy, but we can see that it's visibly risen and it's got a little bit of softness where there is some dough. So those are ready to go in the oven. Nice gentle heat we want for these. So certainly not above 200, probably 190, 180 in our oven. So I've got the large Bushman here. I'm going to use the infrared thermometer to check the surface temperatures. 215 in the middle of the floor, 215 on the back wall, 200 on the left hand side, 230 over on the right hand side. And that's where I took the fire away. So we'd expect that to be a little bit hotter. So all round kind of 215, 220 degrees. I can take 10 or 15 degrees off that. So 20, 30 degrees, that takes me down to 200, 190. So we should be right smack bang in the right ballpark here. I'm gonna leave these on the tray because I don't want the underside to cook too quickly and get dehydrated. Stolen has been in the oven for 30 minutes. We're gonna take a quick look, lovely color just a little bit soft there, so it's just going to be another five minutes or so. The Stollen should be ready by now. We'll bring them out. That feels better, a little firmer, a little more spring in there. If I wanted to be absolutely certain, I could take the temperature of the dough and we'll be looking for high 80s really for this. Always a good idea to try in a couple of places if you're doing this because you might just be sticking the probe into a raisin. And if you're sticking it into the middle of the raisin, it's going to be very hot. So I'm going to give this a quick brush with hot butter. And this is important because we want to seal this bread. So we're going to give it a little brush now and then let it cool and then give it another little brush and sprinkle it with sugar. Wait for it to completely cool, wrap it up in foil, put it in an airtight tin and set it away for a few weeks and then slice it nice and thinly and have it with a cup of coffee or 
a glass of something delicious at Christmas. So that's how you make Stollen in your wood-fired oven. Thanks for watching. If you've enjoyed this video, please give us a thumbs up. Subscribe to our YouTube channel where we provide a new video every week and do ask questions or put comments below. We will provide notes and the recipe for this dish on our blog and put a link to that below the video. Thanks for watching. See you next time.